name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell notification. So because of how late all my stuff was last week because of my conference, I wasn't able to do a wrap-up video, and naturally those are the like two weeks that I read a buttload. So I'm going to do um a like the most re like this Sunday's will be like this most recent week's videos and a couple of the ones from the week before, and then the few that I don't get done I will do in another video, probably going up on um on oh my god i'm blanking on days thursday <laughs> probably going up on thursday as like an extra bonus video and then i should be all caught up um and i'm sorry this one's going up a little bit later on sunday i had to go to a powwow on saturday and it was after eight o'clock when i got home so i wasn't <laughs> didn't really have any light and it's like winter weather again here so apparently we're playing that game again i'm so sick and tired of snow i maybe get my canadianness revoked for that but like like, I just love fall and spring, and, like, why don't we ever get more of those middle season days? It's always just stupid extra winter. So first off, I wanted to tell you about my thoughts on A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmermer. Kem I'm so sorry. Kem Kemmermer. I think that's how you say it. It's er er. It's a weird last name for me. This is a... Oh, it's been pictures like Beauty and the Beast, but she was actually in the group and she was like Beauty and the Beast inspired rather than like a retelling. So we'll go with Beauty and the Beast inspired. So this is book one and I believe it's set right now to be a duology, but I think she potentially has plans for more. And if she wants to do them, I imagine they'll let her do them because this was a New York Times bestseller like as soon as it released. So it is a, it is our favorite, <laughs> it is our favorite, most commonly used in this YA community, a uh, fairy tale retelling, where we have a prince in this kingdom, and he is cursed and becomes a beast, and however, it's got this little spin that Belle is actually from present day, like, Washington, D.C. area, and she stops the beast's assistant, basically, from kidnapping a girl from his world to try and bring to the magical world to make him and her fall in love and break the curse. So she stops that kidnapping like a normal human being would in her time and then ends up getting taken herself. Um, this That's really all you really need to know. It's traditional kind of general beauty and, the, beauty and the Beast plot until we get to the end and things start to shift. I will absolutely commend this book. I've read like a handful of Beauty and the Beast retellings now and I think for a lot of them for the most part the Stockholm Syndrome thing is just still always there. It's never really like dressed or anything like that I didn't see that in here which I'm really 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 pleasantly surprised in and I have to like props the author for that I did that when she was in the group but like Belle goes out of the castle they're not just restricted to that and, like he and like he ends up letting her leave and she makes the decision to come back and like it's having these two different worlds I think really did help distinguish that um as well as like there's he doesn't have that same like aggression or like the pushing to make her fall in love with him sort of I think the way that it's normally written so I think she did a good job of I think it really could be the fact that she got to leave the castle and go interact with the community um that it made sense and that she got to interact with the evil witch in this as well um and that she had um his sort of guard named Grey in here as well and that they interacted together so I think this is really really interesting the representation in this is fantastic it's it's wonderful the main character's brother is gay and he isn't super main character in this book but she said the author that he is a main character in the second book with yeah which I'm really excited about that and um the main character has cerebral palsy so that was some, I've never read a main character with that so I thought that was really interesting. The main character has that, but it's the author's, it's not own voices. However, the author did talk to someone, a friend who does have cerebral palsy and got sensitivity readers to make sure that was good representation. You also have one of the side characters who is good on the side of good from like kind of this local town and village and he's an amputee. So there was just lots of like small representation that I don't think is necessarily done an awful lot. Um, that maybe it was because there was a cerebral palsy and the gay brother that I noticed the, the amputee villager and that he is kind of brought in and he's seen as abled rather than disabled in this book that was just it was just a really really pleasant surprise and I wasn't going in with tons of high hopes because I've had issues with Beauty and the Beast retellings um, but I will absolutely commend this book I love the ending the ending is so good I love his assistant character Gray I love the plot twist at the end I didn't see that coming and I just 
I like that it literally is like, okay, but if Beauty, if, if Beast, like, literally withdrew from this kingdom that he ran, what happens? Like, people are going to still pay taxes, right? Like, what about borders? People still invade places, right? Like, and that's what this go book goes with. And I absolutely loved that. It was, it was such a pleasant surprise and quite refreshing or telling. So I'd actually recommend it. And also find out the audiobook rights have been purchased. We don't know when it is coming, but there should be an audiobook eventually of this book. And I'm really, really curious to see when, whenever book two comes out. If you can't tell, I gave it five stars. <laughs> then I managed to squeeze in Wild Savage Stars by Kristen Perez while I was at a conference. I carried it around everywhere with me and was like, okay, I have five minutes. I can read right now then. I, this is the sequel to Sweet Black Waves. It is an arc. It comes out August 7th. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, August 27th. Um, I saw someone today that were like, I despise Sweet Black Waves. And I was like, eh. And like kind of eye twitched. Like, no, I loved it. Tristan and he's also telling it's messed up. And I don't know that I could really say anything about the plot because it would probably spoil everything that happens in Sue Black Waves. Um, it continues plot wise where it is. You go to a different geographic realm um, for reasons that will be explained if you read book one. And it's the ending is amazing. It's so good. Oh, the ending is fantastic. And like his old is kind of still a brat in this one, whereas like. I never say her name right. I want to say Bronwyn, Bronwyn, but I think it's Branwyn. <laughs> but Branwyn is, is the actual main character, and she grows so much, and she gets a backbone in this one, too. And, like, there's this weird, like, romance pentagon thing that's kind of building up, but, like, it was kind of shattered with the way that this book ended. I don't know what's going to happen there. And, like, I'm just interested and curious and insanely here for it. I am hurting because of the end. <laughs> just the way that the book one did. I really need book three, like, super badly, and now I have to wait, like, an extra, like, I don't know, year and four months instead of just a year for the next one. Which is gonna hurt. Uh, once again, absolutely love this. It's a new kingdom, new geopolitical social stuff was set up um, quite quickly, actually, right at the beginning, and it's developed a, a bit more as we go through the book. Um, and I just... I thoroughly love this. It's Yes, it is romance, but there is so much social, political stuff and historical information in here. Like, it's, I just love it. And I really, for the freaking love of God, please give me an audiobook of this. I want to know how to properly pronounce a lot of these names. These old is, like, bearable in some parts. Like, I still kind of want to slap her an awful lot, but, like, she's not, like, a, like, a, a, she is the way she is, but she does still grow. But you also, like, every time I'm like, oh, she's so stupid, I'm also like, Ah, but there's magic involved in this. Is it really her? Like, I can't... Uh, yeah, so my brain. Five out of five stars. Highly, highly recommend the series. And I can't wait for book three. So I finally convinced myself to pick up Blood Witch. I have such a weird relationship with this series. But it is one one of my challenges for the year was to reread and then read Blood Witch. But it's a heavy Aiden plot-wise. And he's, he's definitely the main focus. This is easily my favorite of the three books. I don't really want to say anything about the plot. It's a continuation of book two, right? Like, the plot is the plot of this whole series. I liked all of the traveling and all the reveals, especially, like, the who are you going to align with because you keep hearing weird things about other people, and then it comes out of, like, just because you assume, like, you know, monks are good or whatever, like, does not mean that they're actually good. So I loved, the, like, how everything ended in this book. That being said... I'm having the same issue that I have with book one and book two of this series, that I can't retain anything. I don't, at this point, it must be just the way Denard writes, it might just be too similar to other stuff for me. I can't differentiate this, I couldn't regurgitate this story for you if I tried. Like, it's, it, I took like four days, took my time reading it and everything, and like, I, for the life of me, can't retain this series. <laughs> don't know what's wrong with me, or the book, or why we don't like, mesh together. I remember more of this one than I do of Truth Witch and Blood Witch. I will absolutely say that. If you're, I don't know, am I the only one that has an issue with re really remembering this book? Like, I take my time. I've tried multiple formats. I don't know what it is. So in the end, I ended up giving this like a four or five out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed it for the most part. Um, I didn't inhale it the way I do a lot of other series. So I don't think I'm quite as hooked on the series as the way I am other ones. Um, and... Yeah, I don't know if I should bother continuing the series if I'm having such a hard time retaining all the information. Oh my god, I was so annoyed. Um, I also read Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon McGuire this week. This is a novella. Oh, actually, I think that was another thing on a TBR or on a 
reading challenge list that I had to do was to read a novella. So, huzzah. Um, this is book one in the Ch Wayward Children series, I believe it is. They just released the cover for book five. It's an interesting concept. It's literally just like if you, if you like followed the kids after they left Narnia in like present day, basically, they come back in present day. And then they go to like, a, I, I feel, I, I don't remember enough about the book, but like, it seems like a Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children sort of setup, or like almost like a, not a Hogwarts, but like there's a boarding school where the parents are like, oh, we don't know what to do. Our kids don't seem to. They were kidnapped, we think, and then they, but they want to go back to that old world. They don't want to stay here. Um, and we cut, meet all these kids who went to different worlds, and like some of them are evil, some of them are good, some of them are high science thinking, some are like pure fantasy. It's really, really weird. And then there's like this like selection of murders that at the boarding school. <laughs> it's very weird. I liked the uh, the representation. There's a lot of LGBT rep in that. They do specify, like, oh, I actually, am, you know, the main character herself is asexual. And she's like, no, I just don't like, you know, the romantic, the sexual stuff either way. And I, oh, okay. Like, everyone seems pretty chill. And then at the end, like, one kid makes this, like, homophobic remark. And everyone is like, like, the whole school, like, inward turns of, like, oh, hell no. I am going to read the rest of the series. I did over-exaggerate. I found out I was at the bookstore recently, and the novellas are $25 Canadian plus tax. I still think that's insanely expensive. Like, I know it's technically, I think technically, well, it is in our bookstore, at least classified as an adult. I don't know for the life of me why this would be classified as an adult. It seems like a YA, like, in every, every sense. Um, also, $25 for a novella is, like, kind of expensive, in my opinion. I don't know. It's like less than 200 pages so yeah so I over exaggerated it wasn't $40 I was mixing that up with something else it is 25 though yeah I'm just not going to join the cult around it the way some people are I think I'll continue reading the books um I, I didn't love it enough to pay $25 for a hardcover novella uh if they maybe ever release like a bound up or them in like paperback format and it's less than $25 for a novella then maybe I'll I'll pick them up. yeah in the end, I gave it a four out of five stars. Not going to join the cult around it, but I'll continue reading this series. Then I read Lady Smoke by Laura Sebastian. This is book two to Ash Princess. Once again, don't know that I can explain much about the book because of how Ash Princess ends, but like it picks up exactly from where Ash Princess ends with all of the alliances, I guess, that are kind of drawn in the sand at the end of Ash Princess. We get more of Theo's aunt in this one and the pirates. And there's a lot of, um, this book reminded me of several other books, but I can't actually name them. Like for the life of me, I can't be like, oh, it's the, I, I literally can see I'm like, oh, it's that, what is the title of that book? It's like our, they're trying to create a political alliance and the option of marrying for alliances is up in the air as a potential thing. And then there's the actual romances that are going on in this. And of course the king is um the, sorry the kaiser is not really um out of the picture just yet we'll put it that way and i loved how much the theo has like when you look at how she was at the beginning of ash princess to how she is at the end of lady smoke it's like freaking night and day like the backbone this girl gets she listens she comprehends and every time she's like they're like oh but you don't have to check like, no but this is better for my country then so it's this weird thing of like she's she's aware of what she wants to do personally but she without kind of self-pitying monologuing all the time it's like no but this is what my country needs me to do i i, I like we can understand that there is you know, I would love to marry, for example, for, for, for love and actual traction, but that's not the situation I'm in right now. So let's find someone that I can work with and that's bearable and we can, we can deal with everything else afterward. A couple side characters, I think it was only side characters and a background character, that there was a woman that she potentially is going to marry is bisexual and there's another character that is gay, I believe. I'm trying to remember which character it was. I've been trying to pay attention more to that now for because we yeah especially with pride month and everything coming up but yeah it's there is a little bit of side characters I wish it was a main character obviously um but I liked how it was put in there that it was just like it's it wasn't a whole plot point it wasn't a sudden like twist in some of these characters it was like oh like I, I kind of got the sense that maybe Laura looked at her work and was like okay it could be more diverse why does this why are we gonna assume this person is straight okay let's make it so that they're you, like rather than like adding gays in like acknowledging that they're already there sort of concept and I've heard some reviewers talk about that before which I think is a fair point like we don't need to add new characters in as if as if you know bisexual people weren't already in 
in existence in our population in these books. So I thought that was actually um, a nice touch that maybe she checked her work um, and noticed that. And if not, then I'm just making things up. But yeah, I liked this book somehow more than the first book. It is an excellent middle book. I will absolutely recommend. In a sea, I think I said this in my vlog, in a sea of unnecessary book twos of trilogies, this is like a standout. Like it's not there, okay? Like it's in a, oh, there's actual premise and plot points and things actually done in here and character development and there's a purpose for it, okay? And I loved it. I love, love, loved it. So yeah, in the end, absolutely love this. Gave it a five out of five stars. And lastly this week, I read Light Years by Cass Morgan. I had not read The 100. I picked this up because I, I I like this cover as like a movie poster. And I was like, it's interesting that they would put something that looks like a movie poster as a book cover. And I've been like kind of driving recently, especially with like light sci-fis, you should say. We'll call it a light sci-fi if that's a thing. This reminded me of bits and pieces of a lot of the light sci-fis that I've been reading recently. Like, it's not Illuminae, but it's like, you know, maybe like the final six. A little bit like Nixia Unleashed. Or, or no, like Nixia Unleashed is the third one? Is the first one just called Nixia? Probably. Yeah. Nixia. Um, it reminded me a lot of those ones. So it's set in this, uh, for the most part, set in the space station of, you know, this cadet academy of training all these people to pilot like a crew essentially so you need a pilot a captain um you know a, i don't know there were other two other positions i think there's normally four people in the squad and this academy though they're pulling in from all these different planets and there's a lot of social hierarchy and racism in these worlds so they're trying to pull it's essentially kind of the way that you know just for example it's not identical but like the black witch where we're pulling in all of these different races into an education institute and being like ha you all have these prejudices prejudices. Now let's attempt to make you all get along and work together. That's basically what we do here. <laughs> and we have these kind of three kind of couples that we end up kind of splintering into. One of the main couples is male male romance and it's so cute. I'm so trash for it. And I, the, the ending of this book kind of hurt. The ending of this book though was so good. I don't know if this author does that in the 100 series but like this was a really good ending. It hurt me as a reader but as a reader I can also be like crap that was a good ending like that was a good point to like stop writing and I'm insanely curious for book two I liked all of the different um perspectives that we got because we did get quite a few of them and then we have some of the characters who are almost main characters but we don't get their POVs so I keep being like because one of them like has like a student instructor sort of potential romance thing going on but we don't we don't get the instructor POV we get the main character POV and she is you know, not the most honest person, we shall say. So it's interesting to be like the whole time you're like, oh, she's lying, she's lying, she's lying nonstop. And then at the end, like, oh, the ending. Um, but there's a, quite a quite a lot of the social, political, um, and honestly historical um, of the society set up quite quickly. It's not super detailed. All of the information that you need is there, but you get a general sense of, okay, so this people on this planet are uh, sort of abuse in the abusing power situation. And they're high key racist against a lot of other people. And you hear them say things like, you know, refugees and, and immigrants or all these like, you know, we don't want any of these people, you know. So this was really interesting. And I kind of want to be like, OK, let's pull everyone from every different organization and minority. And we're all going to make you work together for two years until finally you get it. Like to, to not be a bigot. Like <laughs> I, I don't know how many more YA books we need to release for people to like be like, oh, OK, yeah, I shouldn't be a bigot. Like. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's wrong. I, I kind of had a feeling it was going to deal with prejudice. I think I actually said that in my TBR where it was like pulling people from all different parts of the solar system and making them work together. I'm like, oh, I wonder if it's going to deal with prejudice. And it does. And some of the characters in here, I like, you're supposed to hate them. I detest them. Like, oh, I really do not like one of the girl's boyfriends and one of the girl's mothers. Like, Ugh. absolutely adore this. Couldn't find anything I really didn't like in this. It's not super long, so it, it got as much as it needed to get done in here and act actually impressed with how much it did cover in under 400 pages as a sci-fi. Five out of five stars. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely going to check out the second book. So those are all the books in this wrap-up video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you've read any of these books, let me know in the comment section down below, especially if you struggle with the Truth Witchers. I don't understand what is wrong with me. Make sure to check the description box down below. I will link these books to their Goodreads pages and I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will happily follow you 